change. This train not taking passengers. <coughs> hey everyone. <laughs> All right, I had to actually do that. That's just to piss Jimmy Drama off. And give him something to laugh about for the next 20 years because he's got nothing better to do than listen to my podcast. <laughs> the reality is, is I need to cough to get that out there. Um, I left Melbourne about a week ago, and in that time, I probably smoked more cigarettes than I've ever smoked in my entire life. Um, <laughs> I told my mum, um, she'd given me a 50 euro note you know, usually when I leave to go overseas or something like that, she'll give me a card. And um, it's usually got like 50 euro or 100 bucks or something in it. Like, you know, whatever she's got. And it's got a note that says, you know, go get a massage or, you know, have a drink on me or something like that. So I said to her, the second I touch down in Athens, I'm going to buy a frap and I'm going to buy a deck of smokes. So that's what I did. I landed at the airport, went down to the train station and, um, yeah, I bought a pack of darts. <laughs> For the record, I don't smoke. You know, it's been a party trick just for a laugh. And it's a stupid party trick. I, I don't get anything out of cigarettes. Um, I don't get, you know, I hate the smell. I hate the taste. I hate the sensation of, you know, it leaves in your throat. I think it's a stupid habit. But here in Europe, it's the cheapest thing you can do. <laughs> so we're all about uh, fiscal economic uh, moves. Now... Um, I was tossing up whether I should do a podcast while I'm away. And um, I'm thinking about it now. I'm actually in Santorini. I went out last night. Um, I've been lucky enough to have you know, a few close people with me the entire, most of the trip. So when I, was in, um, when I left Melbourne, I went to Singapore. And uh, from Singapore, I went to Athens. And um, I had, yeah, I'd, I've met up with people throughout the trip, which is good. And it's been a mix of, of catching up with family that I haven't seen in you know, a decade, as well as having some of the closest people to me um, here to share everything with me. So it's actually really, really cool. Um, I was tossing it up whether or not I should... Um, I mean, what was I going to do the podcast on? Just, just based on the fact that I know when I get back, I'll have a bunch of stories to talk about. And obviously, I'm just working off my phone right now. I'll do the best I can to cut out, you know. I'm actually got a cold. I was sick for a week before I left Melbourne. Out of nowhere, I got a flu. And I did the I did the mature thing and sat in bed for four days. And um, for some reason, on the last day of the flu, I got this nagging cough and it hasn't left me. And granted, smoking <laughs> hasn't really helped and I haven't really rested until today. We went out last night. Uh, just you know to a, club, a couple of clubs and all that sort of stuff and um it must have been three thirty when we'd left the club the last club and went and got something to eat and some waffles and stuff um it was about four thirty when i was sending my last text to someone before i jumped in the shower i passed out i got about four hours sleep i eventually crawled out of bed went looking for food <laughs> It was about 12.30, I'd made it back to the hotel. I'd ate a souve and drank a beer and then collapsed on the couch and eventually fell asleep till I don't know, 3.30 or something. So today's the first day, more or less, since I left Melbourne that I've done pretty much sweet fuck all. And it's it's been good just trying to you know, recuperate. But it's been a wash. Like I've gone from you know, Athens, I was running around every day doing touristy stuff and catching up with family. And then I went to uh, Milo, which is an island in the Kikladis. Excuse me, excuse this cough. I'm, I'm really going to try and, and cut it out in the editing. But um, yeah, I actually bought a bottle of cough syrup. Yeah, I actually bought it in, in Haler too. And I bought one that uh, you can't get over the counter in Melbourne. <laughs> it's something um, Greece is good for. I just told him that I'd lost one of mine and... Um, I was going to be spending the next five weeks abroad and I didn't want to get stuck in a country where I didn't speak, you know, the language and all that. And like, yeah, 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 no worries. Here you go. Take it. 30, 30 euro. <laughs> and he had, the, he had the nerve to tell me that uh, Greece has got so, the lowest uh, prices for uh, pharmaceuticals and stuff like that over the counter. I don't know if that's actually true, but I really wasn't going to fact check this guy at like 
yeah, 10.30 at night when I needed something. Um, yeah, I don't actually know what to include in this, as I was mentioning before, because I don't want to go too far into any of the experiences I've had so far. Um, it's been a bit surreal, you know, because I've had close friends mingling with my relatives, you know, and seeing a few new things. <laughs> like, I, I hadn't gone to Miller before, um, and that was good. Yeah, I saw a cousin of mine who had actually come to Melbourne a couple of years ago. Um, I forgot how much I missed transit, and I've had some tra nightmare transit, like coming here and just getting to and from. Um, but I forgot how much I missed the experience of going through airports and all that sort of stuff. You really do see humanity, like at its finest. You see the best personalities coming out to play. <laughs> um, and then it's a potpourri of like assholes from, you know, France or America, and then screaming babies that won't shut up. And <laughs> people that think they own the plane, you know, when they're just in economy next to you. And then, I don't know, it's really, really interesting. <laughs> There's a lot of faces that I don't think I'm ever going to forget. <laughs> I don't know, I, was, I got freaked out, I got spooked on the flight coming to Athens. I was sitting there, and I think I had the ice seat. I'm pretty sure I had the ice seat. And it was like middle of the night, you know, or whatever time it was. I had no sense of time. That's the thing. I flew with Scoot, which is a bare bones budget airline, you know, com uh, a subsidiary of uh, Singapore Airlines. And th they are really cheap. You know, the flight plane was like brand new. Um, you know, service was good. I ordered some food, which, you know, you, you pay extra for. But um, the one thing they don't have, at least not on these model uh, planes uh, that we're flying in, um, they don't have that screen, you know, with the map. The only way to get it is if you check in using your phone onto their app and then get onto the plane's Wi-Fi system and all that. And I didn't figure it out until the last leg. So it's not like you can just wake up and see a screen with a map of where you are actually, like on the planet, like and get a running time and all that sort of stuff. So I was, I, I barely slept. I was watching, I was watching random movies on my tablet and reading Asterix comic books. It's interesting, last year when I went to the Philippines, I was reading Tintin comic books. This year, I think because of the relation, because of this, uh, the real, um, similarities between Asterix the Gaul and, and Greeks in general. I think I've just felt like it was time to read it, read this, read the series while I was flying here. Anyway, um, yeah, you never have a sense of time. So you just look at, you wake up and see the black, dark or it's light. But I remember it was dark and I opened my eyes and I'm just sitting there and this woman came gliding down the aisle from like first class or maybe just the, the front of the budget seats. And she had a hoodie on, she was skinny, pale, and she had her hands in her pockets of like a hoodie and her elbows tucked in as if she didn't want to dare touch anyone come down the aisle and just like judgily looking like at everyone as she's coming through. <laughs> I don't know, it made me laugh. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with people? I don't know. There's so many different people. There's so many different personalities when you're traveling. It's freaking hilarious. You know, there's no shortage of wankers that come to, different to, come to a country that's not their own and act like it's like their own or should be like their own. Went to dinner in, um, where were we? Milo. Went to dinner and we sat down at this tavern. And um, like most people here in, in service and hospitality speak some form of English, you know, if it's not their first language. Um, and I just remember sitting down with this older couple. They were Italian. <laughs> they come round to them and they start speaking, like the waiters start trying to communicate with them. And so they said a few words in English and the, 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 the man... It's probably like in his late 60s, he just starts firing up, no English, no English, and starts like cursing at them in Italian. I was like, mate, like, calm down, man. Like, you're trying to order a falafel. Like, just relax. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll keep this short and sweet. Um, I've still got like, yeah, I can't believe this is just week one. This is the first extended trip I've had since 2011. All my other breaks, like intermittently since 2011 have been for maybe 10 days, two weeks, no more than that. And considering the, uh, the year that I've had, um, yeah, this is well, well needed. Um, I've got five weeks off in total, which is unheard of. Still been doing a bit of work, um, just on my emails and stuff like that, which is, you know, unavoidable, but yeah, I'm going to use the next couple of days. I'm back in Athens tomorrow and I'm going to use the next couple of days just to 
tie off some loose ends and get ready for the next leg, which are going to be two, three countries, two that I've never actually been to. And um, so that should be interesting. Um, yeah, I think the biggest thing that I've taken away so far from you know the last week is just how much Greek like, culture and, and identity and all that is actually embedded in me. I think, I mean, I'm in my late 30s now, so the last time I was here was probably my early 30s, maybe maybe just turned 30 or something, if that. And actually, hang on, it was 2014, so I hadn't turned 30 yet, I was 29. So I'm definitely seeing it from another angle. And um, it's just interesting, you know, the second I touched down, how quickly I reverted to speaking Greek, you know, as the go-to, seamlessly, pretty much. And it's just odd, you know, growing up in Melbourne, I mean, we've always been surrounded by Greeks and there's no shortage of Greek culture in Melbourne, but coming to a country, the only country where it's the prevalent, you know, language and all that sort of stuff, and you walk into a shop and the first thing you say is, you know, yasas or whatever, it's, it really, um, it really highlights just, you know, parts of your identity that you not necessarily take for granted, but you probably never really got in touch with us to that kind of level. Right now I'm in Santorini. I'm sitting, I'm in a studio sort of villa, a split level studio villa. And my head is actually adjacent to a window facing out. So I thought I'd leave it open. You're probably going to hear some birds or kids screaming just with the ambience. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah I don't know. Again, I don't really want to go too far into the stories, just just because of. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna prattle on about them when I get back, if I can remember any of them. But so far, I've probably put on at least three four kilos in the last week, despite the uh, cigarette diet. <laughs> oh, it's disgusting. I'm getting up like I, I wake up, I go buy a coffee and like a cheese pie or something, get the day going, sit down for lunch. Like up until yesterday. I hadn't had a suvo yet. Every meal that I'd had had been like a decadent sit down. Every meal from like Thursday onwards. Even when I got to my auntie's house, like on the Thursday night, it was like 10.30. It's like, you hungry? You must be hungry. I'm like, I'm okay. No, 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 no. So they started like cooking fucking potatoes and all types of shit. <laughs> and like meatballs, like if they're this and chopping up a salad and just bringing stuff out. I'm like, Jesus. Like, what are you doing? Like, calm down. <laughs> but that's nah, it's brilliant. It's been really good reconnecting like, with a lot of my family. The big one's going to be when I go to the village in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, it's still maybe two through two weeks away from that. Um, but yeah, it's very, very surreal. But it feels like I've been gone for, for a year. Anyway... I'll leave this short and sharp, and um, if this actually doesn't take too long to edit with the limited tools that I have, maybe I'll um, maybe I'll do more of them as I go along. But anyway, um, yeah, smoke crack. <laughs> Hold up.